Welcome back to the channel. You join us for part two of the battery degradation test. So the, in part one, what I did is I did a range test and came out to see that it was only a couple percent less than the first range test. So whether that's degradation or just differences in the weather, etc., not sure. Now part two, what I wanna do is I arrived at this charger this morning with 4% and charged up to 100% before the range test. The thing I was interested in is it didn't deliver as much power as the battery should have been able to accept. And we should always expect it to deliver a little extra power knowing that the cooling system, the AC, et cetera, is running while it's charging. So on this test, I have the GoPro running. We're gonna take a look at uh, the full charging session from zero. I arrived with 0% uh, all the way up to 100% and see how much uh, energy it accepts. Don't pay attention to the peak speed. I know it only topped out at like 109, 110 kilowatts here. I used the same charger in the morning and received uh, 125 kilowatts. So I'm not worried about that. It could just be uh, this charger a little tired. I know another car was using when I got here, so it might be uh, limited a little bit. We should have expected to see 125, but like I said, this morning I did. So I'm not worried about that. We're just paying attention more to how much power is accepted through the full charge. All right, so I went ahead and pre-authorized the charge in the Electrify America app and plugging in now. And so let's see the charge starting to ramp up. And here we are, uh, the vehicle immediately jumped up to 110, 115 uh, kilowatts was the, the peak speed we saw. This morning I had charged it and we got to the full 125 kilowatt on this exact charger. So not sure why it's delivering about 10 kilowatt less. Nonetheless, that only adds up to about uh, because this is over the first 20 minutes of the charge, it's about 10 kilowatt less than it normally would be. So that only adds about three minutes to the total charge time. So pretty insignificant amount. It still was a, a pretty healthy charging session here. So here in the first five minutes, we've added 10 kilowatt hours. That results to just about 30 miles, just a little less than 30 miles. We average 2.8 to 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour on our warm weather range test. So especially 2.8 is pretty like pretty solid from especially from our road trips. That's been a pretty consistent efficiency. So uh, here we are uh, still holding that peak speed. What's great is I was able to plug in at zero, actually a little bit less than zero, about a negative 1% technically because I drove two miles past zero. And it's amazing how the Volkswagen just jumps right up to the peak speed from the start. And it holds this peak speed all the way till about 35%. So really good for charger hopping. Uh, if you're not familiar with our other videos, charger hopping is where you just take just enough energy, what you need to get to the next charger down the road. And so typically Electrify America chargers are about 100 miles apart. So we like to charge from as close to dead as possible to about 40, 50%, and then just uh, rip down the road to the next charger and keep taking advantage of this peak speed. As you'll see here, once I get to about 35%, it'll start ramping down slowly. And uh, it's very, a very nice trail down. It's not too aggressive on the taper. Here at 17 minutes, we are at 30 kilowatt hours of power. So just about 100 miles has been delivered at this point. So this is why we love road tripping with this vehicle basically uh, 15 to 20 minute charges at all of our charging stops. Yeah, we stop more often than charging to 100%, but it really takes advantage of the charging curve and minimizes the amount of time that we spend at a charger. Plus, I mean, 15 to 20 minutes is about how long it takes to run into Walmart, maybe hit the bathroom, maybe go buy a water or any th miscellaneous things you might need. Here we are at 50%. That only took 21 to 22 minutes to get from zero to 50%. So again, excellent charging session here. And this is what I'll try to highlight again later in the video. This full charge should take about an hour or just a couple minutes over. But the first 50% took only 20 minutes. The second 50% will take double that, almost 40 minutes. So again, highlighting how important charger hopping really is. Here at 57 58%, we are still holding 80 kilowatts of, of charging speed, so not too bad here. Still um, another, like I said, a great session. And as you can see, by the cost of $0, uh, still taking advantage of my free three years of unlimited DC charging. Now, I bought this vehicle with unlimited DC charging, unlimited time. 
If you go and buy a Volkswagen ID4 today, it is only 30 minutes. So right now you would want to unplug if you can to get to the next charger because it would start charging you at this point. So it took 30 minutes to get to 66%. Speed has is ramping down now. So now we're in the mid 60s for, for kilowatt hours. And it, uh, by the time we get to 80%, it'll be right at about 60 or just below. So that's when it really starts to slow down. I mean, this is still half of what the peak speed is. So you can see how much longer it takes to get each kilowatt hour. But once you get to 80, then it really starts ramping down. And eventually by the end of the charge, it'll go down to about 30 to 35 kilowatt uh, speed charging speed. Still a lot better than most EVs out there. Um, if you take a look at the Mustang Mach-E, um, the new Toyota BZ4X, a, a lot of EVs really are terrible uh, in the 80 to 100% range. So the ID4 is definitely one of the better vehicles at that. However, with the ID4 having the smaller battery and smaller range, 80% can only go about 170 miles. So there's times where you might need a bigger stretch than that, especially when you're going to the national parks where you need that bigger, bigger, uh, the higher charge. With the Mach-E with the larger battery, it gets close to 300 miles on the rear wheel drive. So, you know, 80% in that vehicle can go as far as 100% in an ID4. So it's all relative to how much energy are you actually needing to get to your destination. Here at 85%, it is down to 53 kilowatt, and we've delivered 66 kilowatt hours of energy. So this is relevant because this is about 200 miles of, of uh, range in the vehicle pretty close to right now. And as we've shown in our range test, it's about 215 on a full brand new pack. So this is pretty close to uh, 200 miles. And here we are at 90%. So it has taken 48 minutes or 49 minutes to get to 90%. So uh, again, just highlighting how important it is to just charge or hop, take just the energy you need. Um, like in this situation, there was one other ID4 there. And if another vehicle had shown up, the charger would have been full. In the future, we're going to see, I think, more chargers are going to be full as more people buy these cars and they continue to give the free charging. A lot of people like to take advantage of that. So really just taking what you need uh, so people aren't stuck waiting around uh, for their chance to charge. So, But here we are at 95%, and this should should wrap up in the next 5 to 10 minutes. The charging speed is now down into the 40s, uh, and it'll be dropping down into the 30s here pretty soon. And the, again, the point of this video is to highlight how much energy was delivered. So normally the pack is, so the brand new, the pack is 82 kilowatt hour gross and 77 kilowatt hour usable. And we'll expect to use typically on a zero to 100 charge, a little over 80 kilowatt hours because there's charging losses, there's heat losses, the cooling system is running to keep the battery temperature optimal to accept this DC charge. I've been sitting in the vehicle using AC to keep cool because it's a little bit warm right now at, uh, with doing this test, plus the battery is radiating heat up through the vehicle, so it's getting warm in there. But as you can see here, at the end of the video, it's uh, we're at 100%, and we didn't even get to 77 kilowatts kilowatt hours used. So this is very important because we only delivered uh, 75, or actually 76 and some change. The battery should have accepted 77. Like I say, the charger should have delivered 80. So there's definitely about 3% or so that has escaped the battery from this test. And that coincides with the video I posted last week about the range test that shows that my range was about, uh, th my range on that test was about 5% less. We equated about 2% to the little bit more crosswind than there was the first test, and then 3% less of de degradation. So this is dead even with what that video showed. But this is pretty comparable for most electric vehicles as uh, at 32,000 miles over a year, lots of DC charging. We expect to lose a couple percent. Uh, what's nice is it's because it's a good cooling system in the battery, we're not losing 20 or 30% like some of the old Nissan Leafs used to use in the lose in the past because they have um, air-cooled batteries rather than active cooling. All right, I'm starting to believe that I might be right. There might be a little bit of battery degradation because we're at 99%. It's about to shut off any second here. And it's only delivered 76 kilowatt hours. 
when the battery pack is 77 usable and through other testing, other YouTubers, you can see uh, a, fa a famous test to show the charging losses is look at uh, Tom Malogny's State of Charge Lucid Air video. He charges way more than the battery pack should be able to hold. And that's because of charging losses, running the cooling systems, etc. I've been running the AC the whole time I've been here. So uh, I think we can safely assume there's a couple kilowatt hours that have escaped this battery pack. Uh, since I plugged in at zero, it says 1%. It was definitely zero uh, for a couple miles before I plugged in. Uh, Nears makes no difference. And it looks like we're only going to get uh, 76 and some change, maybe 77 kilowatt hours out of this uh, charger, which means that uh, you yeah, take a couple off for charging losses. We only put about 75 into the pack. So that shows a couple kilowatt hours have escaped. So that's a wrap for uh, part two of my battery degradation test. So we did the range test. I ended up a couple percent less than I thought I would. And now doing the charging test a couple percent less. So I think that shows that a couple kilowatt hours have uh, escaped this battery pack over 31 almost 32,000 miles of uh, hard road tripping, lots of DC charges. Like I said, over well over 100 DC charges. I don't have them all documented just because so many of them were the complimentary charges that maybe I had an issue initiating the charge or uh, sometimes you just pull up to a charger and it has a complimentary charge loaded onto it. Well, I don't have all the data of all of those. So, um, but I do know that it has been a lot of DC charging, a lot of road tripping. Uh, a lot of 105 degree weather in Phoenix or even Death Valley, 120 degree weather, almost 118, I think it was there. And then we've taken it up all the way up into the mountains, down to cold weather. Um, car's been through a lot. So if you haven't already, please do like this video. Please do subscribe so you don't miss any future content and take care until next time.